Hi everyone. Many vendors of PLA filament will provide you with a data sheet, but in many cases that data sheet is wrong. For the material properties, they simply copied someone else's homework, in many cases despite their own claims that their filament is special, containing 11 secret herbs and spices. What's more, they copied the wrong homework. Let's start at the beginning. Most PLA in the world ultimately comes from NatureWorks. And here I have one of their data sheets open. In this case, it is Biopolymer 4043D 3D printing monofilament. And here I have another data sheet also for Biopolymer 4043D, but this time for biaxially oriented films. So if you look at the material properties, we see a yield strength here of 60 megapascals and a strength at break of 53 megapascals. And if we go over to the biaxially oriented films, we get two values here. So we have 16,000 and 21,000 PSI, and those come out to about 110 megapascals or 145 megapascals. What we also see here are these qualifiers MD and TD. These stand for the machine direction and transverse direction, which are two things that make sense if you're making biaxially oriented films. What we also see here are the elongation at break of 160% and 100%. Again, this is far more than you would expect for a 3D print, uh, but for something like cling film, this isn't entirely unreasonable. And indeed, if we go back here for the 3D printing monofilament, we get an elongation of only 6%, which is much more reasonable. Let's now take a look at some of these filament data sheets. We start here with the Prusium and PLA by Prusia Polymers. And if we scroll down here, we get a table with some of the values that they measured. And down here, we have the mechanical properties of printed specimens. So that's good. And here we get a tensile yield strength of about this 50 to 60 megapascal ballpark that we saw before for the monofilament data sheet. And in the Z direction, we notice a much lower strength. This is a little diagram here of how they printed the samples. And these are the print settings and uh, the machine that they used. Uh, and we also have some of these error values, so a measurement uncertainty in all these values. So that's all great. This is what I really like to see. We also have the testing method here, ISO 527-1. Everything is fine. If we now go to Polymaker, we get most of the same stuff. So we have the values, plus or minus the uncertainties. That's great to see. Again, we have a very low elongation at break. That's quite typical for PLA again. And again, this tensile strength is also in the ballpark that we expected. If we scroll down here, we get the sample geometry that they used. And they are a little bit short on how exactly they printed them, but it is there nonetheless. If we go to Altmaker, we again get much of the same stuff. So they didn't do an injection molded sample, but then neither did the others. So that's fine. And again, when we go to the tensile strength and the elongations, everything looks kind of like the others and like what we expect. Finally, here we go to BQ filament. And this is a little bit sparser than the others. But again, we have some values here. Uh, they tested the Z direction as well. That's nice. Um, and it looks like they have a little bit more elongation here. So I suppose they put a little bit more plasticizer in there which is also evident from the fact that the tensile modulus has dropped a bit. But overall, the values are still here, so this is still a good data sheet. Let's now start taking a look at some of these bad data sheets. So here I have a data sheet from Layers PLA, and they write here that the filament is somewhat modified, through which it retains the typical characteristics of PLA, but is even stronger and less frangible. So if you look at the physical properties, we are going to see a lot of deja vu here. So a specific gravity or a density of 1.24. And if we look over here in the biaxially oriented films, 4043D, we get 1.24. If we look at the tensile strength, we get 110 megapascals. So here we had 16,000 PSI. And if you convert 16,000 PSI, you get 
110 megapascals. If you take 145 megapascals, well, that's just the 21,000 PSI that we found for the other direction. Notice also they have this machine direction and transverse direction here, which makes no sense outside of the context of thin films. We have an elongation of break at 160% and 100%. Uh, this is far, far higher than what the other vendors have measured, but again, it is exactly what NatureWorks has measured on their thin sheets. I want to stress here that the sheets here are measured on a film of 1.0 mil thick, so that is 25 micrometers. These films are very thin, and so they are utterly inapplicable to anything you would want to do with 3D printing. Uh, the tensile modulus values here are also just taken from here. So that's just take these numbers and convert them to megapascals and you will get these numbers. Uh, I don't know where they got seven and a half kilojoules from, but we're going to see that number rather a lot too. And we have a melting point of 145 to 160, which we also have over here. So insofar as anything about this filament has been modified, that modification was clearly done by NatureWorks because otherwise whatever they did to it uh, has no effect on the physical properties of this material. So if you now go to the next data sheet, um, prepare for a lot of deja vu. Uh, so a density of 1.24, 1.24. When you have 110 and 145, 110 and 145, 160% and 100%, and again the tensile modulus 3310 and 3860, these two numbers, 7.5 kilojoules, and which we have also over here. And uh, these guys also um, claim that it's a unique material compound that makes it tougher and less brittle than standard PLA filaments. Um, I, I don't understand what they mean by this. Apparently they mean that 4043D is somehow different from other PLAs, but if everyone's using 4043D, then how is their thing special? Because the material properties are the exact same, apparently. Um, and also copied from the wrong data sheet. Uh, here we have easy to print 3D. This is one of those. This is weird. Um, so they have seven and a half kilojoules again. Um, they left out the transverse direction, but the machine direction numbers are still here. So 110, 33, 10, 160, uh, which is exactly what we have over here. Um, and they also decided to copy paste the haze and the gloss values. So 2.1% to 90, which is over here. And that's just a little bit weird again, because it's nigh impossible to achieve these values with FDM 3D printing. FDM inherently introduces some haze into your print, so it's, how would you ever get this? Um, but the weird thing about it is that they also have a pro PLA line, and then they do have reasonable values. The elongation of break is a little long, I guess. Uh, but I think they just chucked it very full of plasticizer, uh, which is what you often get with pro PLAs that try to mimic ABS. Um, the way that you mimic ABS essentially is to just throw a lot of plasticizer in there to make the material soft, softer and more ductile. That causes it to stretch more. But at the same time, the tensile strength has actually dropped quite a bit compared to what, for example, Prusiment will do they will do 50 to 60 megapascals, and this stuff over here does just under 40. So adding these plasticizers isn't a free lunch. Whatever the case, let's move on to Prometheus PLA. Um, again, it claims to be special, but I think the only special thing about it is that they use 4043D. Again, 110, 145, 160, 100, 3310, 3860. Again, these qualifiers that make no sense, and also, again, the melting point. So clearly, there, there is just simply copy-pasting going on here. Um, and none of these data sheets are open and honest about this. None of them 
tell me that they took this data from somewhere else. They only state that they reasonably believe this to be true. Um, the main issue with it really, or one of the big issues with it is this elongation at break value, because this value should really tell whoever's compiling this data sheet that something is very, very wrong. You cannot get this with 3D printed PLA. It's not going to happen. So why did it make it onto your data sheet? Anyway, moving on to quick fab now. Um, credit where it's due, I suppose. It looks like they don't necessarily claim their filament to be extra special. Um, the weird thing is that they have 103 megapascals and 180%. Um, but that is just from Biopolymer 4032D. So we have 180% and you're free to convert these values yourself. But this one will come out to be 103. Moving on to print place now. If we scroll down here, we again 3310, 110, 7.5, 160%. Things are getting a little boring. Prima select up to 12 times tougher than regular PLA. Would you believe it? Well, I don't. 110, 145, 160%, 100%, 3310, 1.24. If your filament is extra special, up to 12 times tougher, why are your material properties so strange and copy paste it from someone else? And the last one, uh, Form Futura is also a bit weird in that some of their data sheets are fine and other ones are just bad, like this one. Um, and this one is extra strange in a way because this is apparently recycled stuff. Um, and if you're gonna be recycling something, I'm going to have to guess that your material property is affected at least a little bit in some kind of a way that at least one of your numbers is just a slight hair lower or higher but nah 1.24 7 110 33 10 160 again they chose the md values and the td values are apparently chucked overboard and even for a recycled material, they have a haze of 2.1% and a gloss of 90. Would you believe it? I don't. Now, I have to say my main issue with most of these isn't necessarily that they copy paste the data. Um, but the main issue is that they are just not honest about it. Uh, so they took their data from someone somewhere else, and yet at the same time, most of them pretend that their material has some sort of proprietary magic to it, which it clearly doesn't, apparently, because the material properties are completely unchanged from the resin that they purchased. The other thing is that the tensile strength is a bit too high for PLA in all of these cases, about two times too high. But that is within a realm of possibility that I can kind of forgive. But it's really this elongation at break. I completely do not understand how that could ever make it onto a data sheet. Anyone who has held a 3D print or PLA 3D print in their hands must realize that 160% elongation at break is just utter baloney. It makes no sense at all. And so not only are they copying other people's data and not only are they not telling us about it but they are also just incredibly careless uh, so they copied the wrong data but then they also didn't notice this clearly erroneous number on their data sheet and really what's so weird about this is i can understand typographical errors or putting the wrong number somewhere on a data sheet there are many errors that I can expect on a data sheet, but if your entire data sheet is just the result of reckless copy pasting, why give us a data sheet at all?